happens when you take two absolute legends of jazz piano and throw them together on an album when their improvisational styles could not be more different from one another. Well, in 1975, that's exactly what we got on Count Basie Encounters Oscar Peterson. What a great title. So I've always loved piano duos. They just, it's such an interesting way to play. And if you're a pianist and you've never played duo with another pianist, I highly recommend trying it out because it is a fascinating experiment. Now Count Basie, of course, most people know from the big band, the Count Basie Orchestra. And if I had to say, I'm putting that as one of the two greatest big bands of all time alongside Duke Ellington. Even still, a lot of people know that Count Basie played piano in the band, but not a lot of people knew that Count Basie was a monster piano player in his own right. <laughs> His style of playing the piano couldn't be more different from Oscar Peterson, which is why this particular recording is so fascinating to listen to. Check it out. I mean, you can... You can just immediately tell that that's Count Basie. First of all, if you're familiar with either of their playing, that type of line is not only very uncharacteristic for Oscar Peterson to play, but it's very characteristic of Count Basie. He did many of these things, which to be honest, they're, they're actually like super hard to play. What we're basically doing is playing like a note, a chord, and then a note. And we just, it's just one fast eighth note line. Ah, but, but see, the really difficult thing about it is that when I play this note and that note, in between, I don't necessarily, my, my, like my fingers don't want to play two notes at the same time. They want to go like that. They want to go up or down. That makes a lot of sense, but to pair them together, it, oh, it's, it's just, it feels very unnatural. And as you'll hear later on, Count Basie, I mean, this was this was a staple of his improvisational vocabulary. And he does some pretty incredible things that I, I would have to sit down and work on this as a pianist just to get my hands like really used to it before I would ever even be able to tackle this with any level of proficiency. But it's a classic Count Basie vocabulary line. Check it out. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I love it. It's just like dropped in there. And this is this is so Count Basie. I mean, it's just very playful and very sparse. And throughout this recording, that's gonna be a really staple part of the contrast between these two incredible players. <laughs> Nothing else. So often the solo break at the end of a chorus before we start the first solo, it's like the opportunity for the soloist to enter and announce their presence. And sometimes you'll hear all kinds of crazy filled up lines, lots of notes, things like that. Not Count Basie, man. He's just like, good enough. Yeah. Three quarter notes in a row. These are almost things that like, they run the risk of being uh, corny, I guess. But the factor that makes it so that Count Basie can play this stuff and get away with virtually anything is the sheer confidence of it. I mean, listen to that intro. How many times was that? Was that five? Two, three, four, five. It's like just allowing these small ideas to just introduce themselves and then let it sit there for a while. Such a master of space. Okay, that is so deceivingly hard. Let's listen to that. If you're not used to that, that is incredibly difficult to do, let alone at the speed that Count Basie's doing it at. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> 
So much of this solo has been so kind of like jagged uh, in a sense. Like it, it, there, there's he plays and then there's space and then he plays and then there's space. They're ideas that are separated by breaths. As pianists, we forget sometimes that like we have to breathe. We have to let the lines breathe. We have to let the music breathe. And because we don't have to do that in order to play the instrument, especially like younger musicians and I'm speaking from experience here, we have a tendency to just fill up the space with so many lines. Now, we're we're about to hear the insane contrast between Count Basie's style and Oscar Peterson's style. But I want you to notice that even though Oscar Peterson, yes, plays a lot more notes, that thought of letting lines breathe still exists, and we'll point that out. <laughs> Wow! I mean, that opening line, it's exactly the opposite of the solo break that Count Basie took at the beginning of his solo. But it's so Oscar! I mean, check this line out! Ah! I mean, whew! A lot of notes all at once, but the line does have a definitive ending and he takes a breath. And then the next line is a lot more sparse. Check it out. Like, that's really sparse in comparison to the line he opened with. Something like that, right? And then after that breath, we can get right back into uh, say, saying an Oscar amount of, of things in one phrase. <laughs> I have done some Oscar transcriptions uh, in my in my lifetime in school, and like, man, they are hard to play. It also helps that his hands were gigantic, and he had incredible classical technique background that really, I think, made him one of the greatest technicians in jazz of all time, right along with Art Tatum. <laughs> Oh my god. There's another breath. Now I know there's notes in it, but notice how we have a string of eighth notes and eighth note triplets, but we separate it by... Just that repeated... Uh... <laughs> Except cleaner. That's a breath. There's notes there, but it seriously breaks up the line that he was just ripping out. Right back to Count Basie. Check it out. And there's... Now they're trading. Like, check it out. More Oscar language. This is so cool because we're hearing two so drastically different approaches to improvisation, yet they're complementing each other really well. That sort of line breath thing that we've been talking about, I mean, they're almost doing it for each other in a sense because Oscar is filling up these notes and then it gets to Count Basie and he plays some bombastic percussive figure that doesn't really take up that much space. And it just is this really neat back and forth. I mean, this is this isn't really like a like a cutting session where they try to just top each other with playing crazy stuff because that's just not the type of player that either of these guys are. These are two of the most legendary pianists of all time who truly understand the art of complementing one another. That's what we're hearing here. I mean, listen to this. <laughs> You, we, the Oscar starts playing the left hand, he starts playing the stride in the left hand. It's just like lights the whole thing up. I mean, in all fairness, I, I you know, I, Count Basie is definitely one of the most legendary, I mean, band leaders, one of the most legendary band leaders of all time, and one of the most legendary pianists of all time. And everybody has their taste, right? You might prefer that more kind of percussive, fun, playful style of Count Basie. For me personally, Os Oscar is the, he's the goat, man. I mean, like, the Oscar is the, this is the pianist that I heard first. Oscar's the reason that I do this, you know? And and I still remember, I still remember the very first record that I ever heard that was of Oscar. It's actually sitting 
on that shelf back there. That's the actual jacket from the CD that uh, my parents got me for Christmas when I was younger. So I've, I've always been just so drawn to Oscar's style of playing. So when I hear stuff like this, I'm just like that, that is what the piano for me is just all about. Like listen to when he just starts playing that left hand. Oh my God. Count Basie. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! More count bass and more of the chord thing. That's so hard. Nice little answer to it. Yeah. Back into the melody. I mean, come on. This is, it's just, it's just, it's an absolute masterclass in improvisational styles and how they compare and contrast with one another and how they can complement each other when paired together. These are two pianists that are drastically different from one another, but it works so well.